Thanks for being here today on, on short notice, but I thought it was important to get uh, department heads and all the leadership teams from all the departments together in one room to hear uh, sort of the latest on the 2015 budget process. Um, last night, as you I'm sure know, the city council defeated the 2015 budget after they approved it. I'll repeat that. They defeated the 2015 budget about a half an hour after they approved it in committee. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they did it, but uh, they did it. Uh, this unique action, as Controller Russ Lloyd says, puts us in unchartered waters, and I think that's absolutely the case. We've worked, uh, we worked till about 10.30 last night, and then all day today, and I'll give you a chance to ask questions later, but I can tell you based on the fact that we are in uncharted waters, we may not be able to answer every question that, that you have, but we'll try. Just so you know, uh, this process began in the public hearings back in August when we presented to the council our original budget, which looked like this. Um, it's a balanced budget, we believe, with a surplus. Um, through months of hard work, weeks of hard work with all many of you in this room, uh, we sat down with the leadership of the council to try and figure out where we wanted to land uh, with a budget that they, they could live with. Uh, at some point, they came to us and said they wanted us to cut $11 million from the budget. $11 million between general fund cuts and capital cuts. Ladies and gentlemen, that would have been devastating to the city. We would have had to uh, lay off a lot of people. And frankly, we don't think it's necessary. So um, their list of suggested cuts was uh, in some cases, were in some cases vague uh, or sketchy. But just to give you an idea, uh, they wanted to eliminate all the drainage projects from Brent's budget. Uh, they wanted to um, cut in half the amount of money we used to demolish abandoned buildings. They wanted to reduce the amount of road paving for next year. They wanted to make cuts to both police and fire. They wanted to close city pools, as we've heard about. And they wanted to eliminate playground equipment for our low-income neighborhoods. This is a very interesting point. They wanted to eliminate it because they wanted to have the say of where the equipment worked. And one council member said, you can call it micromanagement if you want. And that's, in fact, what this budget represents. That's what they're trying to do with that one line item and, and several others. Those cuts, 11 plus million dollars, would have had a detrimental impact on the quality of life and it would really in, uh, inhibited your ability, our ability as a team, to deliver the kind of quality services that we need for our citizens. So when we determined that was just not attainable, the council said, the leadership of the council said, okay, we'd like to get you down, we'd like to get the general fund budget down in the $85 million range. Okay, so we went to work. And we, um, we put together cuts that totaled $2.8 million. And we got to $2.8 million by not cutting any one initiative. Uh, we didn't go in and, and whack one department. We worked with departments all across the city uh, spectrum to find money. We asked you to tighten your belts even further. That's how we got to the $2.8 million. So uh, that got the general fund budget down to $85.8 million. $85.8. So we thought we were in the ballpark of where they wanted to go. That's when the council came to us, the leadership, and said, we'd like for you to cut another $600,000 from the budget. $600,000. Uh, so last night, keep in mind, we're at $2.8 million in cuts. Uh, last night, they cut Roberts Park, $1.5 million. They cut Shot Spotter, and they cut uh, the funding we requested for Mesker Amphitheater. So that would have made the total cuts last night $4.6 million. Um, uh, let's see. And while well, I certainly understand why they wanted to cut Roberts Park and Shot Spotter. Certainly one could probably say for political purposes. Uh, I understand it. I don't agree with it, but I at least understand it. I hope you get the sense through all this that we have done most of the heavy lifting in this process. We've done the heavy lifting. And then the council could not even perform the statutory uh, uh, requirement that's laid out for them and that is to pass a budget. 
Now the job's back to us to try and keep this thing going. November 1st, Saturday, is the deadline. Is that right, Russ? So we'd like to keep this process moving, and it's up to me and all of you, with your help, that we'll, we'll keep this process alive. For the sake of the city and to keep Evansville moving forward, we're going to do this. We're going to uh, do the job, and we're going to ask them to come back and do the job that they were, are required by law to do. This is not the federal government where if you don't pass a budget, there's a shutdown. This is city government. And in city government, when there's inaction on a budget, we revert back to last year's budget. In that case, this year's. That will just create tremendous chaos. And the chaos, what Russ will describe in just, in just a minute or two. Um, in fact, I'll have him get up and do that now. Russ, just come on up. He's prepared a list of um, sort of variances and uh, ramifications of what happens uh, if no budget is passed and we revert back to this. And I hope, uh, if, hope you take some notes. You'll, the numbers are pretty staggering. I think you'll get it. Uh, but that's why we're going to need everyone's help in this room uh, to kind of get through this process. So with that, Russ, I'll give you some of these microphones. Oh, please. 